to Urban Home and to this edition which carries on the two themes really from the last uh, edition of completing the Chapel School and also working on the incline up to the coal stage. Um, behind me uh, I thought we'd have a bit of GWR action. We'll assume that the uh, exchanges are taking place because I've got uh, Nanny Castle going round uh, and a Grange whose name I now completely forget on the other uh, locomotive. So let's uh, go back a couple of weeks now to where I was working on the chapel school and show you uh, how, where I got to in beginning to bring together the various parts uh, of the chapel. Uh, and then the middle section will be to do with the incline uh, and then finishing off with the chapel. And I'll speak to you at the end to tell you about what's going to be in the next edition, which I've already pretty much completed filming. Right, well, as you can see from what's in front of you, I'm well advanced now in cutting out all the various little bits and pieces. Uh, all the walls have now been cut. All the holes for all the windows have been cut. The card paper has been put on and the card folded through the windows to give a brick um, lining to the window edges. Um, the easy ones have been stuck on, uh, as you can see. So that's the back wall of the school. Um, this is the front wall with the girls entrance that will lead on to a corridor inside. This is the front upper portion of the front wall. Uh, and then this is all that's needed doing for the end wall which has the boys entrance. And for the doors, um, I've made the doors and I've gone for a design essentially of what will be two halves. All you'll be able to see when the door goes on, if I bring this into camera. Um, you'll see that what I've done is on a, on a piece of two millimetre um, plastic card, if I get them into the light, I've then scored some lines down to give me um, something of a design on the door and then cut the piece in half and painted them up. And what I will do if I put this down here into view and just turn the camera down a bit so you get a better view is this will be stuck on the back in their two halves. And what you'll see from the front, once this goes on, is essentially as if there was two halves of a door which open inwards. Uh, when I do the girl's door, I will put a dot of black paint on to suggest that there is a handle and an external handle and keyhole uh, because the boys' doors open only from the inside. The girls' doors is, is the entrance to allow access both to the school generally uh, and of course uh, at the weekends. So uh, the two sets of doors have been made for that. You'll see that I've painted up the um, in, a, in a light stone effect, which has really brought the detail out on these. These, these really, I'm very impressed with these. And I have also now cut out the holes into which they will go so that they fit. Uh, some need a bit more of a push than others. Uh, so that they fit in tightly. Now most of these are really snug fits, uh, but even where there is a snug fit, you may not be able to see, there's, there's a gap there. And what I propose to do is to fill that with some uh, putty, uh, just from the back, not too much, uh, because I don't want it leaking through onto the paper at the front, and because that will be hard to get off just to close the gap there for when I put uh, this into to light. But I have to say cutting these has been um, entertaining uh, because obviously the straight parts are easy. You can do those with a ruler. But this part here is quite, uh, has to, can only be done freehand. And you have to do it very carefully because you want a snug fit. And if it isn't a snug fit, you're going to be rather stumped. Um, this is the side wall and I changed the design here to have three very large windows on that side of the, which is the side that you'll be able to see, because the other side I'm leaving without any windows in at all. So all the light comes in from the, the three sides with nothing coming in uh, from the back. So the next stage for me, and oh yes, while I'm talking about it, these were the templates that I mentioned, which you, if you saw me do the fire station. I had different templates for the doors there. These are invaluable. I did try to use the uh, windows themselves, but 
being able to square things up and, and then hold this down while you draw around it gave me much better results as, as the area which needed to be cut out than trying to use the windows themselves. These aren't particularly cheap, but it, they, well, I mean, they're not expensive, £2.50 or three fifty, depending on size, but they do, um, they do repay um, the expense on them. So um, that's where I've got to now. The next stage for me is to start to send, well, to put all the windows in for the church, the chapel, and see how much I then need to do by way of masking at the back, uh, where you won't be able to see what's going on so much, but it will block the light, um, just to make sure that the uh, windows uh, don't let light through. And then it will be a case of fitting the, um, probably I'm going to use the just plug uh, film, because you're not intended to see through any of these windows. Um, and I'll see what I do in the chapel, but for that I will come back and because um, I'm going to experiment with a few things and tell you what it is that I'm going to do. But I'm not far off being able to put all this together now. So uh, I'll come back and talk to you again in the next section when we'll be having a look at uh, fixing this all together and putting in the light blocking stuff. I hope you forgive the handheld nature of this short clip, but just to pick up from the last video, all the windows have been set in. Uh, where I had gaps, they've been filled and then I've painted over them again to, um, to colour them through. The stained glass has gone in. If I hold that up, you'll get an idea of what that will look like. So I think that's going to look pretty good. On the back, uh, there is the diffusing film uh, so that you can't actually see through there. And when the light is behind, it shouldn't, I think, um, show as a single point of light, but we'll see. Uh, for the other windows, if I, this is a good example, again, there's clear plastic gone on for the, for the window, as you can just about see. I've painted out that top window because that's a storeroom, so you would expect that to be dark. And the bottom one has the diffusing light set on it. So again, if I put this up here, that's what, with that lit backlit behind, that's what that's going to look like. Uh, all the other parts now have had similar treatment according to what was needed and it's now a case of sticking them to the base and the first thing I'm going to do is just do the exterior walls and for this front section it will just be the lower exterior wall that will go on because then I want to look to see uh, how I use those dividers and also start thinking about where the lights are going to go whether I have one, two or possibly three lights, depending on which walls I put in place. So that's just a clip to show you where I've got to here before you see it next time, which will be with all the exterior walls on. Uh, and then I can talk about the final stages that will be needed to complete the model. In the last video, I started work on building the incline that will take the railway line uh, up to the coal stage. Uh, I left off, I think, where I'd completed the work with a shaper sheet and that had given me a strong enough structure, uh, remembering that this is this here is shaper sheet with shaper sheet plaster on top, bent round a piece of wood, uh, and the, the plaster is giving the strength to hold that up in place. There's nothing else. It is screwed in place, but the screws are not holding it in place, uh, not holding it up. The wall is doing that of itself. Uh, at the end of the last video, I think I needed to countersink the uh, screw heads, which has now been done, and they've been covered using the deluxe uh, plastic putty, uh, which is it, which does the job rather nicely. The, the other thing that I've done is to build the ramp because the wood ends here, and this is a ramp, if I, I'll just pick that out, which is built, if I bring it up to the camera, just using uh, strips, uh, evergreen uh, styrene sheet. Uh, so the overall top piece is 130 millimeters long. The two side pieces were cut. Uh, they're seven millimeters deep by 120 millimeters long. Uh, and the beauty of that, that's the right uh, rate of incline. And it gives, if I bring this up here, you can see where the, if I get into, into focus, there we go. Uh, the wall actually ends here, but it takes the, this down to meet the ground 
and give not too big a lip for when the incline starts. I've also put that back in position. I've also worked out the cold shed, colding stage, which you can see on the left, is in the position now that it will actually be. I had some of the offcuts from this kit, which had the brick walling on it. Uh, and what I will do, because I need to be able to remove the coal stage in the event that I have to pick up uh, this board, which has all the point motors and things underneath it, I can use some of the offcuts of the brick paper to create a wall behind the stairs and obviously a wall on the other side. And then I will be able to put a, a floor there and that will butt right up against the incline uh, and I shall put a wall along this incline. I think I'm going to keep the wall at a constant size so that the incline rises above the wall. I don't think it needs to be walled and looking at the one at, at uh, Didcot, uh, that does rise from the ground and it isn't walled right up to the top of the um, track level. And that will make it an easier build. Uh, a wall, probably an eight foot wall, mm, maybe not, we'll see, maybe a six foot wall that runs probably from about, about this point and that will run right up and butt onto the wall there. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to disguise the join in some way once that's built. If you look just to the left of the coal stage, there's a block of wood there. Uh, that's just to give me an idea of length. It's about the right length for the piece of track that will come out the back of the coal stage, which is no more obviously than the end of the line and is about two wagons long. On the basis that you would get easily get two wagons in here, you need some space obviously to bring the second wagon up to where the loading goes on, uh, but you wouldn't get more than two or possibly three wagons in the head shunt with the engine. Uh, so there's no point having the ability to have a long rake of coal wagons up there. And that will be just about right for what will be a, a raised embankment, which will be fairly easy to build. I won't need to do, don't think I'm going to do that with shaper sheet. I'll probably just do it all with um, strip styrene and maybe put some uh, plaster card, plaster card, plaster bandage over it to be able to sculpt some sort of sloped hillsides to it. Or I may just make it as a, a tra trapezoid, I think is the correct term. Um, and then just uh, scenic over that. So that's my next pieces of work on here. So I think that's pretty much it on this. Let's go on to the, to the next clip. Well, as you can see, the exterior walls went on really um, much more easily than I thought they would do. Uh, the, the roofs are not permanently on. I'll take those off so I can just talk you through very quickly um, what I've done here. Uh, I mean, obviously the walls have all been stuck on. They've been stuck on to the base and I've cut a hole in the base from which the lights or light will go through because um, I've discovered by trial and error that if I place a light about here and as you'll see this wall doesn't come all the way down now which it did originally it's been cut off one light here will light the school building and the chapel perfectly well and so I am going to use um, one of the uh, just plug lights I can put that in to the existing hub that's running the lights off the uh, hotel. Uh, so that's going to be very straightforward, especially as that's got a nice little sticky thing that will help me stick it just down there. Uh, the doors have gone in. You can see, if I put my thing, those are the doors that get you into the building and they've gone in there as well. Um, there will be a step. That's why there's this little white piece left here. This uh, I should put a step in there. Uh, and again there to cover those pieces and I need to build the three steps that will take you up to the door of the um, of the chapel. Uh, I put a strengthening piece of uh, plastic card or evergreen. This is evergreen strip styrene. I think that's the three millimeter square piece um, to make sure that actually these two walls were the right distance apart. And for the same reason, I decided not to use the internal dividers here. Uh, but instead, there's a piece of four millimeter by two millimeter strip styrene that binds the two walls together. And this card then sits in here to make sure that the walls at this end uh, remain the right distance. The corners, I've, I've cut pieces of the Metcalf card just wide enough to go around the corners. And when the coins go on them, they should 
sit right over the top of those as well. But in fact, from a distance, you really can't see those corners, but it does get rid of the, uh, the white. This will need to be painted with watercolor paint just to take the white edge off there, as indeed will the, the, um, the roof pieces, which I haven't quite finished with yet. So the lights will be easy to install. The build of this part is now complete and it's really beginning to think about guttering uh, and the like and where the gutters would run. Um, if I put this piece of ceiling on, uh, roofing on first, I will, I think, put some coping stones down the centre there. Um, I've got pages and pages of the Metcalf ones from various kits. And I think that that will do to, to finish the top off there. Um, because of the size of the overhang, and I wanted a decent size overhang, the way of putting the guttering on that I used for the houses, which you may recall, was to drill small holes and then use some jewellery wire, essentially to make brackets that you then poked in. Um, they would be too long, I think, and I think the whole thing would droop. So I needed to think of a different way of fixing those. And in the end, if I just drop you down a little bit, uh, I, I hit upon using this uh, strip styrene channel and cutting off from this side the wall of the channel and then cutting uh, piece, small pieces to act as a bracket so that I can sit the guttering, which is this half round rod, uh, essentially you stick it on top and then use the L shape there to attach it to the wall. Now the overhang on this uh, is slightly different one side to the other by about a millimeter, uh, which is why I've got two sets of brackets because this is the end result. If I pick this up, almost certainly I'm going to drop this now. Ah, there you go, bring it into, into focus. And you'll see that it gives me an L shape. So I'll be able to stick that to the wall and then the half round will stick up on the end here. And the combined distance brings the half round just to the right place where it will need to be to provide the guttering. Um, these are probably a bit wider, when well, they're definitely wider. They're, uh, prototypically, that's uh, they're nearly a foot wide, which is really quite big brackets. Uh, but I'm afraid that's a trade-off between um, having something that will be strong enough to hold the, the weight of the uh, bar as it goes across, uh, but not so small that I can't manipulate it. Uh, I've also made two of the downpipes, which is just again using the um, uh, steel core plastic coated rod. And obviously that's really easy to bend and then painted after, after I bent them. So those are for the two end parts on each side. Uh, I, prob I will need to put some other guttering in, but once I've got the, this part done, I can then give my mind to it. I think there would be a gutter here. I'm not sure what would be if I turn this round uh, yet in my mind. So you can see in there, I'm sure there would have to be a gutter there because otherwise water would just collect and go straight in the wall. Um, and similarly, there probably would be a gutter from this, the roof coming down here. Uh, but that will be much easier to do because the overhang from this uh, wall is not, not so pronounced so that I can probably fit that in more easily uh, in the way that I did perhaps with the other wall. So the next piece of work uh, is to get all that done. And I'll show you this once I've got all the gutters and everything else and the uh, steps in place. Um, I'm not going to show you it lit internally until you see it on the layout because uh, I think it looks quite pretty. Uh, so I'll come back when I've got that bit done uh, and that will be the end of the uh, build of this church school. Well, sorry to leave you on a cliffhanger like that, but uh, in the next edition, you will see the completion of the work on the church school and something else. Uh, but for what that is, you'll have to call back in a couple of weeks time. Uh, the locomotive that's just passing over this shoulder now for the eagle eyed among you. There was a reason I couldn't remember which Grange it was at the start of the uh, video. I don't own a Grange locomotive. It's a manor, of course. It's Broom Manor. Um, so it just shows uh, ages obviously catching up with me. 
that's about it for this edition of uh, Elven Home. And uh, if you've got any comments, please do leave the comments. Uh, I really enjoy responding to the comments and they've helped me so much. <coughs> the uh, design of the church school would not be as it is, but for the comments that people left. If you haven't subscribed, well, please do subscribe. Uh, it'd be great to have you along and hit the bell notification so you know when I'm uploading. But until we meet again in a couple of weeks' time, that's bye-bye from me. Bye-bye.